There is plenty to be excited about for One Piece fans because we have so much One Piece news in this past week. From One Piece live action announcement, a new SBS volume, a new One Piece store coming to America. We might be in a chapter break week, but there is still lots to discuss, so let's get straight into it. Starting with One Piece live action news. Season 2 is coming in 2025 and Netflix has announced that they have begun filming. You can see on YouTube and on social media, a production teaser or a filming preview, a video of the East Blue 5 all arriving in their order. And I love the little detail of Makenyu getting lost all around the world before he arrives on set because of course he's playing Zoro so naturally he's gonna get lost. Those who follow the cast will have seen photos being posted on social media such as this one with the main five, their shadows and their actor chairs. Nami's got a new wig for season two and in addition to the main five. It's been announced that the actors playing Buggy, Alvida, and Roger are all returning to reprise their roles for season two because season one didn't cover the Loketown arc, so it seems like we will be getting that in season two. But of course, and perhaps most exciting, we have lots of news about casting for characters that we're going to meet in season two of the One Piece live action. And what I was most surprised about is that we actually have some pretty big names. So we're gonna start with the actor who will be playing Mr. Three and that is David Dasmashian and David Dasmashian is a big name. So he was the first actor I saw being announced and the first one that I actually recognized. I think he's a really big name specifically for those of you who are interested in superhero movies all round. He's been a supporting character in so many Marvel and DC films and series. He's been in The Flash, The Dark Knight, Suicide Squad, Gwoth Gotham, not Gotham, Gotham, Ant-Man, and the list goes on. And I probably know him best for his role in The Dark Knight. He was such a great creepy actor in that film. And Mr. Three is also a little creepy, so I can definitely see how he would fit. But I would actually say that the roles that David Dasmashian has played has always been a lot more intense. Late Night with the Devil, for example, is a horror film that came out in 2023 where David actually plays the lead actor or the lead character character. And that film was actually also partly produced here in Australia. Fun fact. But it's a supernatural horror film. And again, so dark, super intense. He's also been in other really serious films like The Oppenheimer being another big recent example. But my understanding is that he's actually also a really big anime fan in general. And he also enjoys One Piece. And I think that's always really, really exciting. I think a large part of what made season one of the One Piece live action so successful and so genuinely enjoyable is because a lot of work went into it by genuine One Piece fans who love and adore the series so much and genuinely want the live action to do the original One Piece right. And I think that really comes through and you can see it as fans when you watch the live action. And then so then knowing what we know about Mr. Three being a recurring character and an important character, I think that's very exciting. Also in season one of the live action, we saw a lot of episodes dabbling in that horror genre a little bit. The Orange Town episode, for example, both Buggy and Captain Kuro, they were much more sinister, much more darker and intense. So it'd be interesting to see if that's the route that they go for Mr. Three as well, given David's acting background. The other actor that I actually recognized without having to do research was Clive Russell, who will be playing Crocus in season two of the One Piece live action. And I know him best as Brendan Tully from the Game of Thrones series. The Game of Thrones series probably being one of my favorite shows apart from like the last two to three seasons. I've also been watching and following the prequel House of Dragon series, which has also been pretty good. But anyways, about Clive Russell. So he was also a very serious character in Game of Thrones and also in other roles that I know he's played that I'm familiar with. You know, they've primarily been quite serious roles. For example, I've watched King Arthur, I've watched the two Sherlock Holmes films. He also played Tyr in the second Marvel Thor film, which I did actually chuckle at because he played Tyr and given the Tyr and One Piece connection, what with Shanks losing his arm, which seems to be a reference to the Nordic mythology about Tyr. Anyways, I actually have to admit that I forgot or at least I didn't straight away realize that Clive Russell starred in these roles and I only 
only personally recognized him for that role in Game of Thrones. But I do think that this casting will make for some really hilarious scenes, especially that deadpan stare, that perfectly dry humor that Crocus has, because I think the way that he played Brendan Tully in Game of Thrones also had a bit of that very dry, dark humor. And it also seems like Clive Russell has been involved in comedy projects in the past. So that probably wraps it up for actors that I actually recognized straight off the bat. But when doing a quick internet search, I did realize that I have watched some other films or series or what have you of some of the other new cast members and the projects that they've been involved in. For example, Tyrone Keogh, who will be playing Dalton in season two. So from my understanding, Tyrone Keogh was in Black Sails, which is a a pirate drama TV series covering the golden age of piracy. It's a prequel to the Treasure Island story. Now I actually haven't watched Black Sails, but I do remember watching the trailer when the series first came out. So it's good to see that he's acquainted with the pirate world already. But I did actually see that he was a supporting character in the film Blood Diamond. It's a good movie. I haven't watched it in a while, but I did watch it when I was younger. And I don't actually remember the part that he was playing, but I'm going to guess that he was one of the soldiers or one of the military men in the private military company who were serving as the antagonists in the film. The role for Smoker has also been announced. An actor named Callum Kerr will be starring as Smoker. But when I actually did some background research on Callum Kerr, all the videos that came up when I typed in Callum Kerr on YouTube was Callum Kerr shirtless, which I thought was hilarious. One of the memes that came about during the casting news for season one was about how all the actors in One Piece live action are all just super attractive. And I guess going by those titles of those YouTube videos, seems like that's a trend that's continuing in this season. We also have new about the Dorian Brogy, the Elbafian giants who will be first making their appearance at Little Garden. We have Werner Kotzer, a South African actor, and Brendan Murray, about whom I wasn't actually able to find out too much information. So I can't really comment much because I'm not really familiar with either of these actors, also haven't really seen any of their works, but I am very interested in seeing how these actors are going to be depicted as giants. Uh, I mean, I imagine CGI, but I am, I guess, reminded of one of the more or legitimate critiques or feedback that people had about season one, which was surrounding Arlong's size or maybe the lack thereof, because a lot of people felt that he wasn't portrayed to be quite big enough, especially when compared to Luffy. But I think in this case, they are representing giants, so hopefully there will be more work to get that feeling of, you know, gigantic size across on camera. Um, on a funnier note, when I was searching up these actors, Brendan Murray, the first celebrity that came up for Brendan Murray was an Irish singer who used to be part of a boy band and it actually took me a while to realize that I was looking up the wrong Brendan Murray but I was thinking what an interesting casting and imagining what if we had a one piece live action that was a musical and can you imagine the sort of I don't know vitriol that people would respond with if one piece live action became a musical I'm pretty sure a musical for one piece might already exist in Japan because I know they do have stage shows but but I think that would be really funny because Rob Coletti, who will be playing Wapol in season two of the One Piece live action, actually is of a theater and musical background. So Rob Coletti seems to be most well known for his musical roles. He played Dewey in School of Rock, which I actually haven't watched the musical version of, but I have watched a Jack Black film version and I haven't seen it in a while, but I remember absolutely loving that film when I was younger. I have very fond memories of it. You're a fat loser and you have body Order. Rob Coletti was also in the Book of Mormon as well, which I did watch when it came to Australia. I'm not too sure whether he was in the Australian production though. And it's worth noting that he has received a lot of praise for his roles, especially School of Rock. And I think that's important because I think theatre actors, they have really great energy and they have really great dynamism, something about their body movements. I think that would work really well with One Piece. One Piece being such a an animated and, I don't know, surreal or dynamic series. I don't know if those are quite the words I'm looking for because the right word feels like it's right on the tip of my tongue, but it is escaping me. Rob Coletti also seems to have taken part in some sketch comedy and improv, and that excites me a lot because I hope that he will bring that sort of comedic energy into his role as Wapol. For me personally, Wapol is probably one of the more 
lackluster villains in One Piece. So I hope someone with such a rich theater and comedy background will be able to breathe new life into this character. Also, the headshot for Rob Coletti that's used in the announcement from Netflix really reminds me of Shrek. Um, and I can't quite explain it, but yeah, that's just the thought I had. Okay, who else do we have? We have Julia Raywald as Tashigi. And Julia Raywald already has some experience with some existing mainstays of the One Piece live action cast because she has starred alongside Emily Rudd in the Netflix series of films Fear Street. And I remember Fear Street was often cited when news of the One Piece live action casts was announced for season one because Emily Rudd was in that. Fear Street being a series of horror films based on R.L. Stein's book of the same name. R.L. Stein, probably best known as the author of the horror series, Goosebumps, which I do remember reading as a child. Anyways, I'd be interested in seeing the chemistry between Julie and Emily, seeing as that they've already worked together. Although in the manga, Nami and Tashigi don't interact until Punk Hazard, and correct me if I'm wrong there. But I wonder whether they'll make changes in the One Piece live action and we'll see more interactions happening in Logetown than we do in the manga. Given the horror and the supernatural genre and the elements in Fear Street, I think this could work really well for One Piece. Although the Logetown arc itself wasn't really of that horror genre, again, we have seen other characters and other arcs take a much darker and much more horror-centric tone. And so I'm not saying that I am expecting the same for Tashigi, but I just think that someone with that experience would be good for a series like One Piece, which is so broad when it comes to genres. I saw in her IMDb profile that she was involved in a short film called Mokbang Masarap, and I recognize this because this is a combination of Korean and Filipino words, or Korean and Tagalog words. Not that I'm actually familiar with the film at all, but it did stick out to me because A, personally, I love food, but B, because I am ethnically or culturally Korean, and I also grew up in suburbs in Sydney with very large Filipino demographics, and I still have lots of friends, very close friends who are Filipino, enough for me to know that Masarap means delicious, and that's a long-winded way of me saying that I did some digging and it seems like Julia Raywald is a Filipino-American actor and we have a pretty sizable Pinoy representation in the Joy Fleet so I thought I would mention that for some Pinoy pride for our Joy Fleet members and also because I kind of want to watch the show now I personally have always felt that I could actually do a really good mukbang because I'm a really big eater and people always get surprised about how much I can actually eat and that's actually neither here nor there, but it is also comedy and it seems like Julia has been involved in some comedy projects, so I think, again, would fit very well for One Piece. Now we're gonna move on to the Baroque Works agents, or I guess I should say the rest of the Baroque Works, seeing as we have already discussed the casting for Mr. 3, but we have Jazara Jaslin, who'll be playing Miss Valentine, Camrys Johnson, who'll be playing Mr. 5, and Daniel Lasker, who'll be playing Mr. 9. Now I unfortunately have to admit that I'm not really familiar with any of these actors or the works that they've been involved in. But I do want to comment that they're all very, very good looking. And so it just continues that joke that the One Piece live action is just filled with very attractive people. Which is funny because in the manga, these characters aren't always that good looking. I actually think that Jazara Jaslin would have made a really good Kaya because she looks really sweet, really kind, and she could even possibly make for a very good Vivi. And on that note, we do have to mention that there are some key characters characters that we are expecting for season two who haven't been announced yet. Namely, Vivi, Robin, or Miss All Sunday, as she would be introduced as in season two, and I guess Kureha. So we've yet to see the cast members who will be playing these three important, very important women in season two. So I think there is still loads to be excited for the weeks and the months to come. There's also no appearance of Chopper yet, so we don't yet know how Chopper is going to be dealt with. You know, is it going to be CGI? Is it going to be Dwayne The Rock Johnson dressed up? <laughs> we know that the giants are going to be played by actors. Arlong also had an actor, so it does raise questions for about how Chopper will be handled. And also no news about Crocodile, which I guess is an interesting point because based on the casting, it does seem like we will be getting to at least Drum Island, seeing as Dalton and Wapol have been casted. And so for that reason, we can also expect Missile Sunday to be making an appearance 
appearance. Because if they're staying true to the manga, she should appear even before Drum Island. But if we're also getting Little Garden, which it seems we are, then I wonder, you know, what we're going to get between that phone call between Mr. Prince and Mr. Crocodile. And possibly we won't actually get to see an appearance of Crocodile. Maybe we might just get his voice. Or maybe we'll just get a tiny snippet at the end, just like how we saw Smoker at the end of season one. Anyways, I'm really excited about the One Piece live action, just as I'm sure that other fans of One Piece and those who enjoyed the season one of the live action must be really, really excited. During the production period for season one, so around this time, I guess two years ago, any sort of news surrounding the live action was just really very exciting. And it was really fun to see all the behind the scenes, all the actors antics, you know, the filming and the snippets of announcements, just getting more and more of that tease in the lead up to the actual series airing. And I'm really starting to get that same feeling. And Given how huge season one was and just what an overwhelming success it was, I am even more excited to see how season two will turn out. Very big expectations. So we will keep an eye out on that front. In other news, there is loads to discuss about SBS volume 109. Lots of great character background information, sword lore, devil fruit information. In fact, there's so much to unpack that I am dedicating a separate discussion to the SBS itself so please do tune into that and you can find the link below also for those in america the one piece mugiwara store is coming to the us and for those of you who don't know the mugiwara store is a store that sells exclusively one piece merchandise there are a couple of international stores but they're primarily in japan and i was lucky enough to actually visit one while i was in tokyo and it was honestly such an exhilarating experience i genuinely felt like i was a kid in a toy store or in a lolly store. I could have spent so much money if I could afford to. But for those of you in the US or on the west coast of the US, or for those of you who will be attending Anime Expo 2024, there will be a pop-up Mugiwara store coming to LA for the Anime Expo. So I would highly recommend those of you who are able to, to go check it out. I am super duper jealous. I would love to attend Anime Expo. So if any of you are actually attending, please do share your stories, any interesting news or information that you hear or even share photos of your cosplay if you're into that sort of thing. You can join the Joyfleet Discord. I would personally love to see and take part in all of it. On a slightly sadder note, Henry Thurlow, an animator who has been part of Toei, will be leaving Toei. And I actually had a chance to talk to Henry about two years ago in 2022. He joined me for a Let's Talk Wano episode and we had a really pleasant, very insightful interview about his opinions on One Piece more generally, also about his experiences working as an animator for Toei, including One one piece and so I just wanted to say best wishes to Henry and a big thank you for all of his work and his contributions to the One Piece anime. And now for those of you who are more acquainted with this channel you may have noticed a slight change up to the content to the format slightly but I'm really interested in hearing what you all like about this channel and what sort of videos you'd like to see so please let me know in a comment below you know share what sort of videos interest you the most and what you'd like me to discuss. Also answer the poll that I've started in the community community page. What sort of content would you like to bring back? Anyways, on that note, I think that's enough of my rambling for today. That has been the One Piece news for the 2024 mid-season, mid-year season. Like I said, so much happening, so much to look forward to. And thank you all, as always, for listening. Please do like, share, subscribe to the channel. This is going to be the year we get to 100,000. And thank you all to also our Patreon and channel members. And you can also become a Patreon or channel member to further support the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.